Welcome everybody to the House of Wellness. Today, happy brain, happy life. Can you think yourself happy? You're hardwired to work that way. Also, middle age or midlife crisis. What's the difference and what does it mean? And the deadly risks to your health when working night shifts. I've had friends that have crashed driving home from late nights. A show packed with life, nutrition, health and inspiration. It just feels good to let it all out. The dangers of video game addiction and what it's doing to our kids. And our house hero, whose battle to find a cure for his own son has him fighting for all sons. I believe my son's a blessing. And because of him, we're going to make a difference. Let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Hello, welcome to the show. Settle in for the next hour on the journey that takes you to better health and hello to you too, Sophie. Oh, hello, Ed. Hey, everybody, and to you out there. Some great messages on the show today. A must-see for all parents, your kids' gaming addiction. Yeah. And there's one game that seems to have a grip over our sons and daughters right now, and it's not just Australia, it is global. Yep, it is a real concern. It's a tough one for we parents, but more on that coming up later. Gerald is here too. Hello. Hello, everyone. Cramps, sore muscles, stiff muscles, on the A to Z of vitamins today, I've got some great advice. Mm -hmm. right, looking forward to that. Now, Australia is ranked just in the top ten, but as one of the happiest countries in the world. So why aren't some of us actually feeling happy? Mm, according to the American Psychological Association, happy people are more creative, better in relationships and more mentally alert. Good reasons to want to be happy. And can you think yourself happy? Well, joining us today to find out if we can train our brains to smile is Joe Stanley. Hi, Joe. Hi, I'm very happy to you be here. You look happy. <laughs> Do I? Yes. I am happy. But the thing is about happiness, there are many reasons why some people are happy. It can be determined by circumstance, it can be just luck. But there are some people who are able to just flip a switch in their brain and be happy. Kids are so much better at being happy than us adults. It just comes naturally to them. And why is that? Well, I think it's because they're always in the moment. Whereas for us, by the time we grow up, ego takes over. We become self-conscious, we worry about what people think of us. But is it possible to get back to that? Is it possible to re-engage with our inner child? Can we relearn how to be happy? Okay, to begin with, what is happiness? How do we define it? If we were to look to science for an answer, research in the field of positive psychology describes a happy person as someone who experiences more positive emotions than negative emotions. And importantly, they feel satisfied with life. But humans are a complicated lot because the pursuit of happiness is an individual thing. Some people look for it in art, others turn to the bottle or exercise, some live for applause, and some just always seem to be as happy as this guy. We all perceive happiness in a different way. Well, happiness for me is, is um, spending time with my daughter, actually. Yeah. On a Monday. I've come to the Happiness and Its Causes conference in Darling Harbour. Oh, well, happiness is about um, accepting your everyday reality. Ah. This started as a small group of like-minded thinkers getting together back in 2006 to explore the big questions in life. I think for me, happiness is having a purpose in my life and things to be grateful for. Today, the gathering attracts over 2,000 people over two days and some of the world's leading experts teaching everything from laughter yoga to self-compassion and overcoming adversity. Humans want to have some sort of purpose and so mm. if you have that, then you're achieving. Like, the whole idea of achieving is... Mm. Happiness, I guess, mm. in a way. Yeah. You just feel like you've got reason to be here. But the brightest star by far in this galaxy of seekers is here via satellite to share his insights on lasting, genuine happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dalai Lama. Now, I wanted to start by asking you how to lead a happy and meaningful life. I believe the very purpose of our life is happiness our modern education very much oriented about material value 
we should pay equal attention for material value as well as uh, our inner value. The happiness is part of our inner experience. Such, some emotion is very harmful. Some emotion, very helpful. What is the value of anger? No value. Compassion uh, creates genuine good smile. So compassionate mind, very good for our health. Right, so according to His Holiness, true happiness is more about overall peace of mind and the greater good than material pleasures. But that made me think, if the only person that can say whether I'm feeling happy is me, is my happiness totally up to me? Well, science sort of agrees. Some studies have shown that 10% of our enduring happiness is down to life circumstance, 50% is from genetics, which leaves roughly 40% of our happiness entirely within our control. So how do we take control of that 40%? Well, after studying 400 Aussies from all over the country, Dr Darren Morton, author of Live More Happy, claims we can, in fact, think ourselves happy. Probably, you know, 10 to 20% of the population at any time are really struggling, really struggling with their emotional wellbeing. Now, what we know is there are so many evidence-based things that people can do to change the way that they feel, it's like what we eat, because food feeds your mood, how we move, because motion creates emotion, and how rest, you know, sleep, for example, influences our wellbeing. But then there's this other world called positive psychology, and we know that things like how you speak to yourself and, how to, and to other people influences the way that you feel. And so this is why, you know, we've heard it said before for many years, the, the whole idea of positive self-talk and, and, and the like. We actually know that works. You are hardwired to work that way. According to Darren, it breaks down like this. The quality of our emotions determine the quality of our lives. So by learning to speak positively to ourselves, the happier we'll feel. And to illustrate to people how relearning a way of thinking can be a challenge, Dr Daz and his team have been working on a little so demonstration in his moment. garage. Aha, uh -huh. see what happens? You see, riding Whoa. this thing is just oh, like no, thinking you yourself it. happy. <laughs> it will be tricky, but you oh, can do it. Really and so, as a group of three grown adults you know, muck sure around in the park on their the ridiculous donate. backwards oh, bike, there is one surefire way <laughs> to make yourself happy. And I think the old Dalai oh. Lama would approve. Of all the exercises we've ever tested, you know, to try and promote happiness, doing a kindness is the single most reliable measure. Great story there, Joe. Mm -hmm. Look, we see it in our kids. They're naturally born happy, but at some sad point, they yes. grow out of it. Can we get it back? Well, I think there's a lot to be learned from watching the way children play because, you know, when they're playing Lego or they're colouring in, they're not thinking about what am I going to cook for dinner tonight or I have to do this thing for school tomorrow or, oh, remember that thing that happened two weeks ago that's really still upsetting me. Whereas we adults, we obsess over the past and the future yes. and we're not in the moment. It's mm. being in the moment that allows them to be happy. Great advice. Could you, though, think happy? Can you think yourself happy? Well, I, the, the key, I think, to thinking yourself happy is recognising when our thoughts do run away from us, mm. knowing that, oh, hang on a minute, I don't need to worry about that now. Yes. I can let that thought go because that thought isn't me. What's right now is what's important. What yes. I'm doing in this moment is what's important. All right. An audience with the Dalai Lama. <laughs> he embodies compassion through happiness. Yes. His message is finding forgiveness in the journey to yeah. happiness. And I think that is a really beautiful message and a thing to try and aspire to, is not to hold on to the anger. Mm. If someone does something little that really thwarts you a little bit, you know, let that go. Forgiveness, mm. compassion for them, compassion for yourself. We're so hard on ourselves and that causes great unhappiness. Ah, Dalai Lama, we also want to know, Joe. Ah. what is your secret to happiness? Uh, I think gratitude is really important. Yes. Being grateful for what we have right now. And my other tip is just lower your standards. <laughs> That'll make us all so happy. Because if you don't aim for too much, then suddenly you're happy with what you've got. You're a cracker. Good Great job, one. Joe. Uh, the key to your happiness is to plug into our website. It's the key to all your health and wellness needs. Houseofwellness.com.au. Or give us a buzz, 1 800 Hey, maybe we could make friends with the Dalai Lama. Go Ooh. to Facebook and friend us there, the House of Wellness, another great site. For and you. so much great info coming up. The greatest tasting, healthy puddin' in town. Puddin'. And 
midlife crisis. Is that you? Mm -mm. <gasps> Later, is it a midlife crisis or middle age blues? We'll find out. Up next with House Heroes, we meet a father whose fight to save his son's life has helped create a national campaign. When he was diagnosed, I had to save him. It's just a father's instinct to fight. More after the break, here on the House of Wellness. Well, our house hero today is an amazing dad. Ever since learning about his son Emilio's diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, or DMD, at only two years of age, Ellie Eid has been raising awareness and funds to help find a cure. Now, Ellie gave up his job, dedicated himself full time to finding that cure for Emilio. Along the way, he created the Save Our Sons Foundation. It's not what this father gave up, but what he's done and continues to do that makes him a hero. Before Save Our Sons, I was a train driver. And I used to drive a train that had brakes. And I had to stop at platforms. Now I'm driving a different kind of train. I'm driving the Save Our Sons train. This train has no brakes. And there is no stopping. There's only one stop. It's the finish line. It's the cure. My name is Ellie Ede, and I'm the founder of Save Our Sons Duchenne Foundation. Well, Save Our Sons was founded after my son was diagnosed with a condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a muscle wasting condition and it robs our boys of many, many things they're able to do that we take for granted, like walking, like running, like jumping. There's no cure and no one survives. When he was diagnosed, I had to save him. It's just a father's instinct to fight, to protect the family. What's, what's unique about our boys, if you look at our boys, the shape of their face, the, the symptoms are all the same. And when I saw it, every time I saw another child, all I can picture was my son in that child. So that child then became my child. And along the way, I found myself not finding just for my son, but for all our sons. With, with Save Our Sons, we have three, three focuses that we want to concentrate on with our money and our funding. We have um, one, clinical care. So now we are now funding five nurses across five states, across five different children's hospitals. We're funding scooters, breathing machines, cough assist machines, and stand-up wheelchair. Now a child can press a button and he or she can stand up in a wheelchair, be at eye level with his or her peers, and be able to move along. They already feel inferior to the world looking up at it and the world looking down on them. So we're giving that back. I believe my son's a blessing. And because of him, we're gonna make a difference. And currently, there is no cure. But what we can do and what we're working towards is halting the condition. In a perfect world, we eradicate Duchenne, the word does no longer exist. Our kids now, any child that's born with the word with Duchenne or any form of muscle dystrophy has a future, has a life. That's a perfect world. Amazing, huh? Yep. And earlier this year, the foundation and a team of walkers pushed the boys with DMD in wheelchairs more than 157 Ks over seven days around Sydney, raising a million dollars for that step towards a cure for Duchenne. What a great man he is and such a dedicated father too. If you'd like to know more about Save Our Sons Foundation, head to our website for all the details, houseofwellness.com.au. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So great. Now I'm going to change tack okay. here. Midlife crisis. Do you instantly think of a Harley mounted silver haired 50 something man? <laughs> no. Or woman riding off into the sunset with a younger partner? I mean, I have a Vespa, so the crisis is manageable, <laughs> right? But so I can close. see, I'm going to read the butter some jokes here. But perhaps what we call a midlife crisis is a genuinely unhappy mm. older person desperately trying to reclaim their life. So. Yeah. Is it a real psychological problem or just a cultural myth joining us today? <laughs> to explain is clinical psychologist and mind-body expert Leanne Hall. Hi, Leanne. Hello. <laughs> what, what is a midlife crisis? Is this real? Well, look, you're right, it's typically associated with a middle-aged man mm. or woman who is generally quite unhappy with their life. So it's a term that's been bandied around since around the 1960s and although it was a psychoanalyst that came up with it, it's actually economists who are the ones that actually have given us somewhat evidence that this actually exists. Um, but from a psychological point of view, I'd have to say no. 
Do we suffer from this midlife crisis? Well, by, by virtue of the fact that it's a crisis, I think we can. But I think most of us can go through midlife unscathed mm -hmm. and albeit very kind of happy. But there are a certain number of people who actually do struggle. But really what we're talking about is more of a developmental crisis or an existential crisis, if you like, rather than a chronological age. You can't possibly connect a chronological age, age. or number yeah. with a psychological phenomenon. And it isn't... Like, it's always associated with men, isn't it? But women go through their own crises through life and sometimes around the similar age, sometimes not. Yeah. Why is it that we go, OK, yeah, it's the silver-haired fox riding off in his Ferrari or whatever? Why is that been coined that way? Well, because I think when the term came out, it was typically at a time when the, the stereotype of a Western kind of home, if you like, was the, the lady was the stay-at-home mom. Right. So she didn't have career necessarily, I should say. But so back when the term first came around, it was more about men who were unhappy with their job and, you know, flew off with the secretary in a sports yes. car. or yes. Stuff. Um, but I think now women, because women do have those pressures, I think it is becoming something that women are suffering from as well. I mean, mine's way off because in my head I'm only about 35. So I think that's where the crisis is. That, that's the point. But <laughs> yeah. interesting, the economists are trying to play psychologists. Is it yeah. more a question of, hey, kids are just about through school when you're in your 50s? Maybe you've got a bit right. more money to buy that nice car. Absolutely. So what they've basically found is, I guess, like a, a U-shape of happiness. So uh -huh. when we're young and when we're old, we're really happy, but yet when we hit that midlife, and, and that's exactly right, I think it's a time when often you're at a point in your career where you start to question, oh, is this really what I want to do? Kids might be leaving home, you're getting a bit older, so physically the ageing yeah. is kind of happening, so there's a number of things happening that contribute to it. But we're always trying to make the, it a negative thing. What about all those people that have lived and worked their whole lives, the kids leave home and they go, yes, I want a Ferrari, yes, I want to look after myself, I want to do something with my life. Isn't that a positive? Oh, it sure is. And that's, that's the trick, I guess. It's about looking at it not necessarily as a negative, but when we are at a point in our life when we kind of feel like we're questioning things and we're unhappy, mm. do something about it. Reflect. Yeah. Have a think about what you want to do next. So you buy that low-slung aerodynamic Porsche, but you do your knee getting into it. Uh, <laughs> and getting out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, issue. Okay, some great tips. So mm. just... Weather the storm, you know, yeah. and see it as a positive is the takeaway message. Look, don't be afraid to get old. There's nothing wrong with age. I think yeah. we live in a society where we don't value that. So yeah. often we ignore that we're getting older and we put it off so we don't plan for our future. So we get to a point in our life and we think, oh, my gosh, I've only got so it's many... It's over. It's over. I haven't yes. planned retirement. What am I going to do? Right. So I think if we kind of embrace it reframe and actually it. plan for it right. and reframe it, mm. that's right. I've made extensive notes in 15 years. When I hit that 50 mark, I'll come back. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. Stay Thank with you. us. We'll be right back here on the House of Wellness with more. Later, how game addiction is hijacking our kids and it's not good. And next, we're whipping up a pudding loaded with nutrients. The truth will be in the pudding. Back here after the break on the House of Wellness. Today we're making the ultimate treat for your body. We chia, the South American superfood, high in iron, magnesium, zinc and a whole lot more. This super simple sweet is a combination of chia with crushed walnuts, one tablespoon of collagen powder and 500 ml of almond milk. Gently combine the mixture and pour into a sterile, sealable jar and refrigerate until the chia is plump and fluffy. Finish with fresh berries and a sprinkle of cinnamon. Oh gosh, that looked yummy, nutritious yes, and delicious. Collagen chia. We've heard about collagen for our skin, right? This is the chia pudding with Bioglands mm -hmm. chia seeds. I'm going to try it. That is my kind of dessert. Do yeah. you know those chia seeds are the super seed? They're packed with goodness for your health, your digestion, mm -hmm. energy, weight control, and they're super high in fibre, Ed. You know, it helps you go to the toilet. Right. Yeah. Try that. I won't double dip. Thank you very much. I was looking very carefully at that. The nice. issue I have, the chia is great. And thank goodness our dentist, Dr Luke's coming because he can help us get the chia seeds from out between our teeth. Maybe not personally. You no. could do that yourself. Okay. I'll yeah. do my best. I'll, I'll press on. It's time for your calls. We have uh, plenty lined up today and standing by. Let's go to Casey first up. Standing by in Berry in New South Wales. How can we help? I feel like I've got a bit of a foggy brain at the moment and just wondering how to get rid of that cloud when things get overwhelming. Absolutely. What about some 
Fog clearing advice, please. Mm. If sometimes when things overwhelm you, you do get a bit foggy, and the, mm. the perfect herb there is called St John's Wort. Okay. It's something that seems to almost lift that cloud of fogginess away to allow you to get on with your life. Bear in mind, though, Casey may have some sleep issues. There could be lots of underlying things there, but the straight-out herb, St John's Wort. Okay. What a lovely name, is it? It's it's not St the John's best marketing Wort. tool. W O R T. Okay. Ah. Now that helps. OK, next up we have an email from Linda in Sandy Bay, Tasmania. We're getting lots of emails similar to this one, actually. Okay. My son is always suffering from colds, earaches, chest infections. If anything is going around, he will catch it. What can you do, Gerald? This is all ahead of you, Zoe, yeah. and this is all about a growing child because their growing takes away their inbuilt immune ability to withstand all of these infections. Right. And getting these little things, it's actually good for them because it's helping them develop resistance. So you support the growing child. Good nutrition, saline without a preservative to keep their nose yeah. um, nice and clear, which is good. Plenty of calcium-rich foods because that's as they grow and then they will cope with these little bits and pieces. All righty. Uh, 1800 469 788 is our number. You've got the details on our website, by the way. We go to Caroline now in Mitcham, Victoria, standing by. I suffer from my psychiatrist caused by mosquitoes. Is there anything you can help me out with? Myositis, I think. Inflammation like, yeah. of muscles, Ed. And it's funny, we're mentioning their mosquitoes. We're learning more that a lot of these inflammation-type diseases are being carried by mosquitoes. So yeah. when summer comes, we need to take more protection. But in the meantime, coenzyme Q10 helps muscle energy at cellular level, really important, and that's enough just to help cover that lack of energy and the inflammation. All righty. Also, to Annie on the line from Forbes in New South Wales, what's your uh, problem today? I get really bad reactions from some things on my skin and I'm just wondering if you can put body lotion with coconut oil. Okay. Great question. Yeah, it's a bit of a winter thing, skin irritations, isn't it? It is. And remember that our skin is protecting us from outside elements. And at this time of the year, we tend to dry out a lot more because yeah. it's drier air. And you'd notice with Fox, Fox that you're so moisturising him all the time. Uh -huh. So what we've got to do is nurture those layers of skin around our body, particularly for the hard-working exposed bits, arms, legs, yes. and even sometimes our backs. All righty, great info. So Keep good. the questions coming. We are here to help. It's your hour. You can always follow up these sorts of stories via our website, houseofwellness.com.au. is a great one for advice, tips, recipes and so on. And if you want to call any of us, 1800 469 788. And Facebook is always a great one to have handy when you're checking in with family and friends. Check in with us too. House of Wellness is our site. We'll be back right after the break here on the House of Wellness. Later, gaming addictions and the dangers to our kids. But we may have the solution. Next, why night shift could be bad for your health and working nine to five can keep you alive. Uh, midnight man meal, bit, bit of wheat mix and beer. After a busy day. See you back here after the break on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. As a new mum, this story got my attention. I spent the first few months waking through the night to feed my gorgeous little baby, which meant I wasn't getting any sleep. For the first time in my life, I actually felt like a shift worker. Yeah, right. Well, you're not alone, Zoe. Every evening when we climb into our beds for a cosy night's sleep, approximately 1.4 million Australians are just beginning their working day or technically working nights. Yeah, now it must take its toll. I know sure. I felt it and I wasn't one of them. <laughs> so we sent Caroline Pemberton into the night to find out. It's midnight and most of us are winding down or already sound asleep. And because we spend up to a third of our entire lives sleeping, the quality and quantity of sleep is really important to our overall health and well-being. Recent studies in America recommend that adults 26 to 64 years of age need seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night. And according to Australia's Sleep Health Foundation, over a quarter of all Aussie adults, 26%, use the internet virtually every night before bed for work and 23% report that their weekday work routines do not allow them to get enough sleep. It seems that the effect of a 24-hour society on our national slumber is profound. All across Australia, an army of shift workers are just getting started, keeping our cities and towns 
running gently through the night. Hi, Jeff. The night shift. It's the domain of these guys, the cabbies, the cops, nurses, doctors. I mean, even new parents. I guess we all do it at some point, but at what cost? Our driver tonight is Jeff Williamson. He's been doing the late shift for over 30 years. I think the, one of the worst things is, is going to bed one day and uh, going to work rather one evening and going home getting some sleep. And then when you wake up, you're never too sure what day it is. <laughs> you know, it's, Jeff always um, does the same shift it's... and only eats home cooked think, meals. Yeah, he has yeah, no trouble sleeping through it. the day, so Jeff enjoys yeah, really, really good health. So, you know, you, you, you do adjust, and some people can adjust, whereas others can't. People who work rotating shifts are the most at risk. The British Medical Journal recently published a study that found night workers were 41% more likely to suffer a heart attack or stroke. And the World Health Organization has linked shift work to obesity, diabetes, and cancer. True, true. So to find out more, I'm oh. dropping in to see our very own sleep guru, Dr. Mark Levi. Did you know, Caroline, that sleep problems mimic mental health problems? It, it wreaks havoc on the brain long term because you're like in permanent jet lag. Doctors and nurses suffer the effects of rotating shifts more than most, probably because their jobs are so incredibly demanding, mentally, physically and emotionally. Hey, hey how, how was you? work? How was your day? Yeah, it was a good shift, actually. Was Dr it? Rob Stewart is part of the emergency team here at St oh, Vincent's in Sydney. How does your body cope? Have you noticed any differences? I have. Like, I used to get up at 5, 5 o'clock, go for a run every morning, no worries, and I think those days are behind me. But, but like, you jump in a cab to get home because you wouldn't drive, or...? There are many times when I definitely would not drive. Like, I've had friends that have crashed um, driving home from late nights. The secret to surviving those rotating shifts is to convince your brain that it needs sleep. And one way to do that is by Thank establishing you. routines, whatever they may be. All right, what is for dinner? Ah, oh, just the standard uh, midnight man meal. Bit, bit of wheat bix and beer. What? After a busy day. OK, that's pretty strange, but it's what works for Rob. After his so-called meal, Rob spends about an hour winding down before darkening his room, filling it with incense and playing classical music. Well, you get your head on the pillow, but the brain's going nuts. It's filing away um, important messages and, and problem solving. And, and all your organs at night are being cleaned and, and a lot going on. And that's also why you need lots of oxygen at night. If you're a shift worker, is it OK? And the answer is yes, it's OK. You'll be OK. You'll be OK. But you've got to reach out for all the right information, all the right tools, all the right procedures to um, make the best out of it. I have to show you guys the coolest thing. So most smartphones these days will have a display and brightness setting. And you know that blue light keeps us awake, right? So you can actually set it to night shift. Look at this. And wait for it. Bingo more warm so you can schedule it so that it's not keeping you awake but if you have the opposite problem and you need to wake up or perhaps you're a little jet lag check out these guys a little bit sci-fi but that green light I think you wear them for about half an hour to an hour and that that green light does the opposite and wakes you up so I can start becoming a night owl myself do you know what I think these look actually quite good on us. Yeah, is there something different about you mm. guys? I'm just trying to stay awake. Do they, do they work on your little ears? They, they don't. They're falling down, <laughs> half, so but it's funny. OK. Uh, Caroline's with us from the story. What, what do these actually do? What's the theory behind okay, them? OK, the theory behind them is to reflect like a bright light that is a waking light into your eyes. It tells your brain to stop producing melatonin, which okay. is that sleep hormone. So we feel nice and awake. Perfect for jet lag. Mm -hmm. That's great. Clever. Yeah. But I need a small size. Um, now, Terrible stories we're sending on. What, what time are you up to? Oh, oh, you guys are cruel. Yeah. We wrapped that story at about 4.30 in the morning. Found a good little eatery, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, OK, let's talk circadian 
rhythms, right? Because going from night to day with these shift workers, what is it doing to our bodies? So you have this amazing 24-hour body clock yeah. that keeps us kind of in this sleep full wakeful pattern and it's actually really important for your health to get the right adequate amount of sleep so it basically makes you go to sleep when you should and when we disrupt that circadian rhythm it actually has some quite big impacts on our health wow. serious impacts too so for people like shift workers who really you know like Rob you can't and the man's saving lives, you yeah. know. It's difficult to him to, oh, no, get a day job. You know, yeah, we definitely yeah, yeah. need those people working at night. So it's really about how do they maintain a routine that helps them alleviate those health problems. So exercise, really good diet and getting enough sleep. And even some Blackout events. curtains and, hey, some green glasses. But if you were, say, doing that seven days a week, that would be OK, rather than disrupting it, trying to switch back from a night shift to a day shift and then back again and throwing yourself out. Absolutely. So the routine and getting on a solid routine is yeah. fine. It's the really, you know, doing two nights on and two days off. Yeah, yeah. And really stuff. That really stuff. Thank around. you. Back as my days as a disc jockey on Triple M, I did a few of the old mid-dawn shifts and so that rock and roll lifestyle. Was that before they came out? Yeah, well, yeah. I would have been good with the headphones too. Good job. Thanks for that. So we've seen how shift work can affect the health of adults. It's very demanding, both mentally and physically. But what does a sleepless night mean for our children? Mm. With the new video game craze that's got our kids as young as eight and nine really hooked, there's more than a few suffering from late nights and that is not good. No, gaming addiction has become such a problem that the World Health Organisation recently recognised the issue by listing gaming disorder in its official classification of diseases. But how do you know if your child has a real problem with gaming? Yeah, here to help us understand and find out what we can do about this is researcher and founder of Tech Club of parents, Dr Joanne Orlando. Nice to have you back Hi. with us, Dr Joe. Hello, here you go. I mean, this is a hot topic on the sidelines of sport with all the parents, right? The video game Fortnite. Yes. If you haven't heard about it yet, I'm sure, parents, you still uh, uh, will. Yeah, um, it's, it's similar to Minecraft, which my boys were right into. Um, a story that comes to mind was a nine-year-old girl who was playing it for so yeah. long, she, she didn't even want to go to the bathroom. I mean, this is a top-level kind of addiction. Well, she went... Yes, she didn't whilst, go to the bathroom. Whilst sitting there she went playing the game. While sitting there, that's right. Yeah. And the, that's the thing about this game that kids are really obsessed about it. And it's got parents really wondering, you know, is my child just enjoying video games or have they actually crossed the line and moved over to being mm. game addicted, particularly since the World Health Organisation yeah. have, have classified gaming disorder as a new mental health problem. I ask myself so, every day that so, same question. Yeah. So the thing is, it's not all games, it's not all children, right? So how can we decipher what's what? Yeah, so which is healthy behaviour yeah, and which, which is isn't. unhealthy behaviour. Well, there's a, a good rule of thumb is if your child enjoys, like, going to the movies, playing with the neighbours next door and they start to not to want to do that, then maybe think, oh, OK, because they want to play video games. Right. Yeah. Maybe they have a problem. But the big difference is if they start to not to want to do any of the things that they would usually love and it lasts for 12 months, so all they want to do is to game, to play video games, if it lasts for that period of time at least, then they that may like have a, a long gaming period disorder. of time to so gauge that. That's right. So this disorder is a very extreme health condition. So okay. on a, one, a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 10. It's yeah. an addiction. So they don't expect anyone, more, more than 1% of the population, to have it. But if your child's got good grades, still has good friends, yeah. hanging out, doing the things that they still love, then they probably don't have an addiction. All right, I try to broker a little bit of green time and then some screen time. So I get some outdoor <laughs> air and then did. the screen. Is that the way to go to Absolutely. sort of keep this addiction at bay? Yeah, absolutely. So so from the time they're really young, so sometime doing physical activity, playing outside, sometime inside, part of which might be playing games. But you have to model that yourself. So you can't say, all right, it's time to get off the screen, go outside and play, but, you know, you've been checking your Instagram feed right. for the last few hours. <laughs> that doesn't work. So you have to model it. And I think it's also good to set up to break down any them versus us barriers. Kids yeah. on games, I'm an adult, I don't know anything about video games. Games so are kind bad. of wanting to engage with yeah. them as well and see what the game is all about. Could yeah. that be a good idea, maybe? I mean, here's the it thing. Is. This video game craze will pass. Fortnite had predecessors. It'll, yeah. It's time will come. But that's an important tip, so not panic. Um, also focus on setting up healthy approaches uh, to watching your kids play, kind of interact with them. I think you yeah. can do that. Yeah. And finally, keep tabs on that sort of negative, obsessive behaviour. It'll kind of creep up on us, I think, is what you're saying over the next sort of X months. That's right. So they will have highs and lows. In school holidays, they might play video yeah. games a lot more. Mm. But yeah. it's really that over that 12 months, are they really just all they're doing is increasingly right. playing games. Thanks, Dr Jason. Great info Thank there. You.
Hope you're enjoying the TV version of The House of Wells. Don't forget, every Sunday morning, you can catch us on the radio edition here The House of Wells. Yes, we are across the country, so make sure you tune in. Loads of fun information for everyone. Now, don't go anywhere. Still more to come here on The House of Wellness. Back after the break. And yes, we're right across Australia on the Seven Network and the Prime Network for everyone who wants to live a healthier life. If you're having trouble sleeping or getting back to sleep, stick around. The A to Z of vitamins may put you to sleep in a good way. But up next, we look into the dental cost of kids' sport and it's not pretty. Loads more to come here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. Now, playing sport's great for our kids. We know that it keeps them active and helps with their physical and emotional development. But parents need to be aware of the injury risks when selecting their sports. Mm -hmm. Damaged teeth are one of the most common sporting injuries and they can cause significant ongoing problems for our kids' dental health. So, joining us today to help prevent these nasty injuries is dental guru... Dr. Luke Cronin. Dr. Luke, the guru, hello. Thanks very much, Gus. Yeah. Um, entering critical time for me, I've got a couple of rambunctious boys into all their sports. So what sort of damage could they sustain? What's the long-term, I guess, damage uh, if they injure their teeth along the way? Well, one of the most important parts about your teeth is that they don't heal themselves. Yeah. It's over, so, right? One falls out like an adult We can tooth. fix it, but we need to look after our children's mm. teeth, and it's really important they play sports, so we shouldn't shy away from that. Because of their teeth, we just need to look after them correctly. With that? With the mouth guard. Yeah. That was always a great thing come footy season. You sit in the dentist chair and you get the mould stuck in and you can't breathe for a little yeah. while. <laughs> but it was cool to have your mouth guard. We think yeah. of football, obviously. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you've got impact sports, you need it. But you also got to think about things that you might not think about, like skateboarding, for example. Well, that's what one. I was going to say. Netball, there are so many other things. It's not just like footy, there's so many ways kids can damage their teeth, right? So what else should we be doing to avoid damage when they're playing sports, apart from a mouth guard? Is there anything? No, basically for your teeth, the mouth guard is everything you need. You the better, yeah, the better fitting it is, the easier it is to wear for the children as well. So you want to do it in a way that they are going to wear it, because if they're not going to wear their mouth guard, then it's not going What's to the give point? them any help. I mean, there's some you can just get off the rack and they're, they're literally, you put them in some boiling water. Um, a, a, obviously a top <laughs> fitted top flight mouth guard is the way to go, but costs are important too. That's right. So something is definitely better than nothing. Yes. But if you're going to get something that fits very well, then you need to go and see the dentist to get it fitted properly. Absolutely. Just like this. Right. So you can get one because I know I couldn't use them because, I mean, I never did sports. But <laughs> um, when I tried once or twice to use a mouth guard, I found it really hard, like you, like you almost wanted to gag. They're OK now. You can, they're thinner and they're more flexible. The most right? important part is that they stay still. Mm. Uh -huh. So when you're trying to make one yourself at home, they often are loose and they fall down and that makes it more difficult to wear. But if you get one that's made at the dentist, it will actually fit and it will stay there. And it's a lot easier to breathe because a lot of people say they have trouble breathing when they're wearing yeah. a mouth guard. I mean, look at every footballer taking a shot for goal. They pull the thing out, stick it in their sock or just try Ew. and get some breath. They so can't understand each other yelling commands on the field. is quite funny. But <laughs> that pros put it in. If the pros do it, we should do it. That's right. And especially when kids are young because they've got their really big front teeth and they're really small baby teeth around it. So they're more prone to get their adult teeth damaged than their children's teeth. And if that adult tooth is damaged, what happens? Do you have to get, like, a fake tooth put in? Is that over? You can't, like, re-put in the tooth, right, once it's out? No. So with children, if you do lose a tooth, you need to keep it in milk and you need to see a dentist as fast as possible. Uh -huh. But milk. unfortunately... Yeah. So, unfortunately, if you do lose a teeth, there's not a lot you can do for children. Oh. All right, look, after your teeth, but keep playing sport. Thanks, Dr Luke. Great to see you again on the couch. Cheers. If you'd like to follow up that story, find some more of those tips or check on anything that you've seen in the show in recent weeks, it's all up on our website, houseofwellness.com.au. Oh, give us a buzz, hey, Ed. Call us, call GQ, 1800 469 788. And talk about social interaction. Let's be your Facebook friends yeah. as well. Follow us, The House of Wellness, on Facebook. Back with more on The House of Wellness.
Welcome back. A to Z of Vitamins time now here on the House of Wellness. Gerald is back with us and we spoke a bit about sleeping through the night, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be difficult for many reasons. Stress is an obvious one. Some aches and pains, um, even leg cramps keep people up at night, don't they? What about an all-rounder to help us out and get that, that big night's restful sleep? It's called, Ed, magnificent magnesium. Mm -hmm. Is that the clinical term? Mm -hmm. No, that's my term. Okay, okay, great. That's my term. So here we've got a substance, a mineral, that we're often insufficient levels in our body for all sorts of reasons and it's involved in more than 300 biochemical reactions mm. in our body every day whether we're asleep or awake magnesium's needed for enzyme production good for muscle activity it's good for protein synthesis good for immune function you name it magnesium is invariably involved in some way. So you mentioned good night's sleep. We're yeah. always talking about how to get a good night's sleep. I'm dying for one of these. <laughs> so are you telling me that magnesium will help me sleep? A week away from Fox and Benji in a cool, <laughs> calm environment with some magnesium would probably make a difference, but it's not a magic solution for a busy It's not mother. that magnificent, is it? Well, I've got to for, get rid of my son for first. everybody else, it would be OK. He speaks the truth. You've had me on it for a couple of months. It's yeah. magnificent. Yes, it is. Like oh, you said, there you are. I'm magnesium. taking it home then. Um, and we can find it in some of these foods as well. There's some kale, bananas, got a little bit of magnesium as Abo, well. Abo, And really, the, the classic food is nuts. Is it? Yes. Okay. Nuts have got lots of magnesium. Yum. Delicious ways to top it up. We spoke with uh, naturopath Dr David Javan a little time ago. Um, he said adrenal fatigue can also be oh, linked to low magnesium levels, so an important can. one. Certainly can. All right. The A to Z of vitamins brought to us by Go Healthy. For healthy energy and vitality, try New Zealand's number one premium supplements. They're now available in Australia. One caller waiting patiently on the line. Good on you, Tricia. We've been standing by for you on the Mornington Peninsula. How can we help you out? In the mornings when I wake up, especially in the winter, I feel very lethargic. I'm not sure if it's the heating. But I just wanted to know if that's the case. Well, we all kind of hibernate a little in the winter, don't we? Yes, we Pump do. the heat up. No, the opposite. When you go to bed, Tricia, turn the heat off. Just get off, comfortable. Off, off. off. Mm -hmm. okay. Off, off, completely. Let, okay. let the house cool down. You sleep more comfortably in a cool room where you're nice and warm. Done deal. Interesting. All right. Thank you, Tricia. Thanks for all your calls. Next week, we're going to take a look beneath the surface of our skin to find out why hydration is so important and also how to bring the intimacy back to your relationship, everybody. Zoe, what are you leaving with today? Well, you've just talked about bringing intimacy back in the relationship and that is all I can think about. Best get you home. Right. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want to watch us again, just head to our website, houseofwellness.com.au. There's loads more great info waiting for you there. Thanks again to you guys and for you for all your calls and thanks to our friends at Chemist Warehouse as well. Have a healthy and well week. Thank you. Bye.